Welcome back to the Lunch Table Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Don't forget, like, subscribe, and all of that. I'm going to keep that short and simple. Um, Quick story, man. I was looking at my homegirl's Instagram story, and it's only 10 seconds long, you feel me? And I just seen this beautiful young lady with an amazing voice in a matter of 10 seconds, and I was like, yo, who the fuck is this? So I hit her up right away. I'm like, yo, like you need to link me with her like right away. She's like, okay, I got you. Dug a little bit more. Found like a song with J.I.D. Found a song with Earth Gang. Found this song called Planet You and also Black Truck. And I was like, yo, like I'm instantly a fan. And this beautiful young lady, she goes by the name of Mariba. Mariba, what's poppin' home, girl? Hey, what's up? How are you? I'm well. You good? Yeah. <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Yo, like like I said, man, you have an amazing voice Thank and you. like, you know, it, it's crazy when only a 10-second video can really encapsulate me. Mm. Do you get that a lot when people just like find you or like listen to you for the first time? Um I, Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I I, I don't know that I have a consistent answer from people, but I just, mm. I don't really have that research, but, uh, oh, all good, <laughs> all good, still growing, right? But yeah, you know, I think, um, people find me <laughs> 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 and they're like, you know, they reach out and say things like that. Yeah. In all different ways. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so Mariba, like, I, I want to know like a lot about you and that's usually how we start off these podcasts. So like, what's your background? Like, like, where are you from? I I kind of moved around. I was born in Montgomery, Alabama, um, mostly in the South, like okay. uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, also grew up in Pennsylvania. So like, what the just hell? kind of moved around, yeah. Um, and I kind I feel like North Carolina is is my home. It's where I came of age. So. Really? So then, um, when did you move to North Carolina? When I was like. 12. Oh, super young. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. Well, why, why did you decide to move to North Carolina? Oh, I didn't have a choice. I, okay. was, I was 12. <laughs> I just had to go wherever my parents went. You gotcha. Know? <laughs> and they, they moved for like, what, a job, I assume? Yeah, jobs. Okay. What, yeah. what were your parents doing over in Carolina? The teachers, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they just would teach at different places. They just like yeah. were kind of, they were, my parents were both the people in their families they both come from big families, and they're both the people that left, like, the home base, you know? So... Where is the home base? My mom is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. She's um, one of ten, and, <sighs> yeah. Wow. My aunties and uncles, we run deep. Yeah. And my father is from Ethiopia. Okay. From the capital. Dude, That's so then mom. even, like, your parents, one growing up in the U.S. and one growing up, like, in Ethiopia, like, yeah. that that's, like, two different cultures colliding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's some overlap, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, no, just for sure. In blackness and, and a lot of the communal... My father's from a really big family, too, so, you know, they both just grew up, like, with not a lot, but sharing and, and uh, knowing about, like, community and just, like family and my father came here and he was obviously separated from his family like my whole family on my dad's side still lives there oh really yeah um so and then she left too and she was the first one of her siblings to leave and like eventually others kind of dispersed but mm -hmm. um yeah they both parted from that and kind of like went their own way and then they had me and my siblings so do you, did they ever tell you a story about why they wanted to part away from, like, their huge families? Yeah. There's different reasons, you know? Some are, like, family things, and, and I mean, I think both of my parents are just, like, curious about the world and gotcha. adventurous, and always, from where they were, they love their families, but, like, always, like, wanted to see what more was out there, you oh, know? Yeah, for like, sure. Like, they just kind of like that, so... Um, yeah, I can't uh, say I can't say that I know every reason why. I know some that I wouldn't share because it's their business. But oh, like, for sure. you know, but th I think just that curiosity and that willingness to like just travel, just and try, and just yeah, see, yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, I I feel the exact same way because um, my dad, for example, right, 
every time I have a conversation with my dad, he's like, oh, you know, you have family over in, like, Australia. You have family over in, like, Europe and Canada. And, you know, my family's Filipino. We have mm. family over in, like, New Jersey, um, California. And I'm like, where are Anywhere. we not then? You know what I mean? Like, it's because yeah. even my dad is, like, one of, like, nine. And I'm like, okay. So I guess I have this, like, sense of travel in me. That's why, like, I didn't really want to, like, stay home in the Bay Area. Mm, I wanted that's to where move. you're from. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just like seeds just are planted around the world a lot of times for people whose families like kind of left their countries and yeah. you know for opportunities, um, and like it just takes like one or two people leaving and then it kind of starts a an effect an effect you know yeah, yeah. people are like oh I have someone out there so I can go out there too and you know yeah yeah so but then it must be like it must have been difficult for like other members of your dad's side and your mom's side to migrate to the United States since you guys were, like, always moving around? Yeah, well, so nobody really tried. Most of my family from Ethiopia that left Ethiopia, they went to Europe. Um, oh, okay. Italy and, um, like, the Netherlands and, 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 like, London, you know what I mean? Just kind of went to those places because, well, for different reasons, I guess. But mm -hmm. um, two of my cousins came and lived with us when I was growing up. When we moved to North Carolina, they mm -hmm. moved in with us. And so that was life-changing for both of us because it was like, we're like, you know, we're cousins, we're blood. We we have a lot of similarities, but then we grew up across the world from each other. So, like, they opened up a world for me and I opened up a world for them. And it was amazing. And I love them. I actually just came back from Ethiopia last week. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I was, I was there, keeping so. on your Instagram for a bit. I was there for one of their weddings. One of oh the two God. that came to live Congrats. with us. Congrats. Thanks. Congrats. Were you a, were you a bridesmaid or anything? No, because it was a, it was the boy. Like when I was there for my for the girl mm -hmm. who was living with us, I was in her wedding. I was involved with her wedding more, but um, you know, like it was the guy. He had his groomsmen. Like I wasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just the family that was yeah, yeah. there. It was super lit. So then, what is there any differences between like a United States wedding oh and like God. a wedding in Ethiopia? Uh -huh. She's like, yo, you don't even know. <laughs> People really don't. It's it's a lot. It lasts for days. Days. Yeah, like your liver. I mean, if you drink. <laughs> my. Liver. That, that's why you got that healthy ass drink I'm, right now. I'm detoxing right now. <laughs> I don't even party like that. But, um, it's really it's it's it like it ranges. It spans from like very sacred and ancient to like just a turn up. You know what I mean? And everything in between. Huh. And it lasts for about a week. and A week? The whole process, yeah. So literally the entire time you were there, it was, it was wedding from like the moment you got there. It was wedding from the moment I got there, but I stayed after. Wait, okay. no, that's not true. I actually, no. Yeah, it was wedding from basically the time that I got there. But um, it was dope. It was really fun. I mean, I would love to go, and next time I go, it probably won't be for a wedding. So oh, I no, could just, for sure. You know? But um, it was, it was so, one I mean, of the best like, times ever, yeah. So, like, is day, well, like, what's day one like versus, like, you know, the third day and the fourth day and, like, the seventh day? Day one is kind of just, like, what's happening. I'm upside down. Because, like, you just traveled so long. Yeah. And it's just, like, time is all different and, you know what I mean? Um, but... But, and, like, you're just, I don't know, it's just this weird, I feel like I was dreaming the whole time, huh. the first day of being there. Yeah. Um, but as the days progress, obviously, you get used to the time, you get used to the air, um, and just kind of your body adjusts, and it's just, like, it's hard to leave. <laughs> I, I extended I my trip. You. I was supposed to be there. <laughs> I, every time I go, I extend my trip, because it's just, like, I came all the way. Here, yeah, you might as well just stay as long as you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Mm-hmm. So what day of the week is the actual, like, wedding ceremony? It was on Saturday. Okay, and that's the sixth day, or? That was, no, I got there on a Wednesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So, like, the fourth day is yeah. kind of, like, middle of the week. Okay. It was still dreamy then. I was still, like, meh, but I was, like, 
starting to meld with it, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. By the end, the, the fucked up thing is like by the end, you're like, oh, cool, I get it. And then you come back here. And that's where I'm at now, which uh, is like me adjusting to being here again. And <laughs> hence the detox. Yeah. <laughs> Rearranging my body back. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I mean, even like a traditional Filipino wedding, I think only lasts like a day or two. So, oh, it's, you know, it's crazy. To, yeah, yeah, I, I've been. Um, I think my, my cousin got married back in 2010 uh-huh. or 11, something like that. And literally the first day was just all the preparation for it. And then the second day was the wedding. And then the night is like, you know, everybody's just like getting drunk, having a good time and all that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, they divorced, so I don't think oh. I'm gonna. Yeah, <laughs> kind of awkward, it but it happens. You know, yeah, no, I mean it, it happens. It, it definitely happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but so you mentioned when you moved over to North Carolina, you had yeah. like some cousins who moved in with you, mm-hmm. and it was kind of like two worlds colliding. Mm-hmm. What what part of their world did they bring to you that you it, acquired from them? It was just more their. Like who they who they are, like as people, kind of their dispositions, their demeanors, their respect for certain things. Like, I mean, a lot of things overlapped between us because you know I was raised by my father, who comes from, like, our fathers were grew up together. Yeah. You know, his brothers. So like, there were some similarities already, but they just, I don't know. There was something um, just different about them, like culturally mm. and the way that they like treated each other, like. I have an older brother, and they were like a, a brother sister duo too. And yeah. me and my older brother just, it was like. <laughs> it was hell. It was hell. <laughs> Literally, it was hell. So, and they had their, sh- their things between each other, but it's just like, I don't know. I just, it was, it was different for me. It was a different speed for me, you know? Like, and they're just really, really, really like familial and just like. Um, as soon as they came into my world, like I kind of opened up because I just came from a family that like me and my brother, like we were classic siblings that like fought. Like we weren't those like cute, like, oh, my little sister, like let me protect her. Like, no, it was just like, we just talk shit and would be (laughs) like doing shit together and then getting in trouble for it. And like, you know. Crazy mishaps, yeah, yeah. wounds, all sorts I of I feel you, I feel you. Now, nah, me and my dude, me and my sister were the exact same fucking way. Oh like, my we God. Were like, we would get into fucking fights. We would fucking yell at each other all the fucking time. And my yeah. mom, my dad was just like, let them fucking solve it. Where my mom's like, no, you guys solve it right now. Oh my like, God. Like, stop fucking fighting. We're just like, no, fuck her. She's like, no, fuck him. It's like, oh my God, oh it, my is, God. it is not going anywhere right now. No, we just, yeah, like... I mean, I come. I came from a a, a sheltered like mm. I was. I was, you know, raised in the church, and it was just kind of like the ways that we expressed ourselves were more tame in certain ways. But like, we just clashed. Yeah. We weren't. You know what I mean? Like, we just. We both were just really passionate about stuff, and gotcha, and we both gotcha. like went back down from a fight either, <laughs> <laughs> which is still true. So like. It just, it it was that way. But then it grew to be a really great relationship. Over time, over time, you lose energy for that shit and you're just like, oh, we actually kind of vibe with each other. Like, okay. No, no, I I totally agree. Like, I remember the last time I was back home in the Bay Area, right? Like, I have never, like, drank with my sister. My sister never hung out with me and my friends, right? Mm -hmm. So the last time I was there, I had, like, hella homies over. And then my sister, Sabrina, she comes by. She's like, oh, hey, Kuya, which means, like, older brother in, Mm -hmm. like, Filipino tongue. Mm -hmm. Oh hey, I was like, "Yo, do you want to like, you know, chill?" With She's like, "Oh, you're inviting me to hang out with you and Aww. your friends." I was just like, "Dude, just get your ass over here, fuck it." And you know, it was a good time. <laughs> and I realized like it really just took like, even though it took like a really big split between uh, like her and I, like that's yeah. a, essentially how we got closer. It evolves. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe all relationships stay the same, no matter if it's, like, yeah. romantic, uh, you know, brother-sister or even, like, yeah. friendship and whatnot. They so, shouldn't, because if you're changing, how could something that mm. close to you not change? You know what I mean? I feel like we're always evolving, so part of, like, a loving relationship is making room for the other person to, like, change and evolve, and you to change and evolve, and then you end up in a new place. Yeah. You know? Which for can sure. be great for certain relationships, to be in a new place. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I hear, I hear you. Yeah. I hear you. That's dope. So um, what, what kind of change did you have to adapt to, I guess, like environmentally when you went to North Carolina? Because even mm. at 12, you probably had to like change friends and all that too. Yeah, that was the hard part for me. That part, I missed the boat. I just didn't have friends, basically. <laughs> When I was in North Shit. Carolina, like, it's weird because I grew up, I grew up right outside of Philadelphia and, like, I lived there until, like, I would live there for elementary school and middle school until I moved there and I had hella friends. Like, I, like, you know, I was just, like, I don't know how to explain, but I just was cool with everybody. I just yeah, knew yeah. everybody, you know, I kind of grew up with everybody. And then I got to North Carolina and I realized I didn't know how to like make new friends at all. Like I had had the same little situation for like eight years, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like yeah. going through school. And I didn't really have those skills and I was really like really angsty. Like teenage shit hit me really hard because I was already emo and like felt a lot. And mm-hmm. like that's why I gravitated towards writing and singing and, you know, mm. getting things out because I, I was really like, I won't say emotional. But, like, sensitive. Like, I was really sensitive. Things affected me, like, really easily, you know? So when I got to North Carolina, I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to make friends. Like, I don't think I'm going to. I don't think it's time. Oh, wow. It was really weird. I didn't connect with anybody, really anybody. There were a few people, of course, like, Uh that I met along the way. But I was just in a really strange place. I guess now people would try to diagnose it with something but I just feel like I was more I was just really in my own world and I just would do my schoolwork and come home and just write songs like that's all I did like every huh. day I would write songs until I went to sleep and my parents were going through a divorce and like you know my brother was gone out of the house for the first time in my life and I was mm. kind of dealing with that alone as like their child you know yeah and then my cousins were there but they were living their own lives, and they're older than me. They were going to college and stuff. And so I was just kind of, like, angsty as fuck, and I just would write songs about my feelings, and that was the only place I would really get my feelings out. And then yeah. I'll go to school. I'll talk to my two friends. You know what I mean? Buy weed from the random guy that sold, like, <laughs> weed. It's like, I need a coat, man. I need a coat. Yeah, I yeah. mean, like, I started just kind of, like, forming who I was because I was just, like, what what else am I going to do? Like, I don't really have, like, it wasn't a regular high school thing for me where I, like, had a ton of things to do. I was just yeah, kind yeah. of like, guess I'll just, you know, play the guitar and make more songs, you know what I mean? And process the world. And that's when I started doing that all the time. So then at what age did you start just writing? Was it, like, high school? I was writing songs, like, when I was, like, nine or ten, but they mm-hmm. just were... Like, I was talking about really deep stuff, and I had no idea what I was talking about. Like, it was, like, falling in love, and it would be the deepest stuff about soulmates and shit, and it's, like, I'm nine. But, like, (laughs) but then, like, when I moved and my, like, things started really changing in my life, like, fast, like, I had stuff to write about that I actually understood what I was, like, going through. Do you know what I mean? Like, I was growing up, and I was just, like, dealing with really complex emotions through writing songs, so it became more, like, pure. It wasn't just because I like to sing, you know? It was, like, yeah, to yeah. get something out that was in, you know? Well, you actually drew inspiration from, like, emotions and what was going on through Exactly, your life. yeah. It wasn't just, like, oh, I'm going to write a song about trees today. Yeah, I'm which gonna... is what you do when you're a kid. Yeah. Like, you don't, you know? I mean, I, I certainly didn't, like... Shit was a breeze for me for, like, as a kid. Like, I was living a very, until it wasn't. And, like, life kind of has been that way for me. Like, drastic shifts, excuse me, like, drastic things will happen. So when North Carolina, like, came and, and things kind of, like, changed in my, in my family and stuff, I just, I just found ways around, like, how I felt, you know? And I just... I actually, that's some of my favorite times of life, you know? Huh. At the time, it sucked. At the time, I was like, damn, like, this isn't how I thought things were going to go, you know? But then, I don't know, you get over things, and it's like the things I got from it, like what I learned about life and, like, myself, it was helpful. So when you look back at times like that, what, what do you concur? Like, what do you learn from that? Or what have you learned from that? Um... I guess to just kind of like, I mean, it sounds cliche, but just like believe in yourself, you know, invest in in yourself. Mm Because like, um, 
if I had been dependent on that at that time, if I had been dependent on other people making me happy or telling me who I was supposed to be or what I was going to do, like, I would have been doing nothing and been depressed. Like, you know, there yeah. was nothing pouring into me at all, like, yeah. at all. So it was just like, I found, I found it in myself and I just started building it from within, like, from the inside out, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So... It was kind of like I said, like it, it wasn't fun at the time with like what I, I wasn't equipped to really like appreciate it at that time. But yeah. my mom used to say that to me though. Like she would see that I was down, you know, my mom was like, would always observe me and like, you know, some parents like, especially from their generation, they don't really talk about what they see. Yeah. They don't really talk about their feelings with you and your feelings or whatever, but she would observe me and sometimes she would just be like, trust, like she would always tell me that that was going to be like that I was on the right track, you know, there, that I was yeah. just, like, becoming, I was becoming. Well, I think without having an experience like that, you wouldn't really know how to, um, I guess, supply your own self-happiness, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because we, over here, we talk a lot about how people go through life without truly knowing how to become happy, and, mm -hmm. you know, just through talking with people and having other conversations, like, it's crazy to me when people try to find happiness through other people. Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, they're also trying to find happiness through, like, through, you know, you or, like, you know, like, whoever else they look up to. But there's, I, I always mm -hmm. believe, like, there's, like, this unlimited well of happiness that we can pull from, like, within ourselves. Yeah. It's just a matter if we take the bucket, throw it down, and, like, pull the water out. Usually our buckets are cast way outside of ourselves. Like, hmm. way outside of ourselves. Usually our buckets aren't even, like, inside of ourselves. They're, like, sitting outside waiting for people to come by and put stuff in it, you know? And that's real, like... And I won't say, like, oh, I just completely was cured of that in high school and I never... Like, yeah. no, I definitely search for happiness outside of myself in moments that I probably could have found it within myself. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's just, like... That's what it is more is that I learned that that was an option at that time. Like, oh, if all else fails, <laughs> which it does. <laughs> Spoiler alert. We, we go <laughs> through those things. <laughs> but, um, you know, then I can always just, like, recharge and, ref like, find it all within myself, you know? And anything else is just a bonus because, like, I kind of, I'm kind of good alone. And I am very, very good alone. Almost too good alone. Yeah. Yeah. Are you the type of person who will like go out to a restaurant and just like eat or like yeah. watch a movie by yourself? Yep. Yep. I that's tight. I fuck with that. I yeah. fuck with that. I do the same shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I I like company, but yeah. I like not company too. Do you find yourself talking to yourself a lot? Um, in my head, like I just kind of I think a lot. I have conversations. Okay. Inside. I talk to myself sometimes, though. Like, it's more like, when I talk to myself, though, I feel like it's more like my parent self to my child self. Like, it's like, okay, don't forget to do it. Like, it's like... Oh, uh, okay, I you get you, I, mean? I get you. Yeah. That's that's. Do you tight. talk to yourself a lot? Uh, I mean, I do, actually. Yeah. Like, I talk to myself in the mirror. Even, like, before... I talk to myself in the mirror, dude, too. Dude, like, every single time, just to, like, you know... I feel like talking to myself, it triggers something in my brain. Like, okay, like, you know, just, like, focus and, like, hone mm -hmm. in and, like, figure out what's going on. Like, for for example, right, I had um, this girl named Hannah on the podcast a couple weeks ago. And she was like, yeah, you know, even before a show, I just talk to myself, get myself hyped. Because by the time I'm on that stage, you got to forget about everything else that you're doing. And you got to, like, just pour your heart yeah. out and soul, like, whenever you're in front of people just doing shit. I'm like, that's real. That's real. Yeah, I definitely, I, 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 I guess it's more like, I feel like the way that I hear the best is when I get really still and really quiet and think about something, mm. you know? So I, when I'm about to perform, like I, I need quiet and usually solitude, but sometimes that's not like fully yeah. possible, but like, and I just breathe a lot and think like and I kind of I just visualize an amazing show happening you know like just yeah, looking, yeah. looking at people in the eyes and just feeling people because like I do get nervous <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> and it's kind of like but I it's not like I don't know nervous doesn't seem I get anxious I guess or like just the energy of like 
the energy that will be there uh-huh. gets me energized. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is nervous, but um, <laughs> but that's how I deal with it. Like I always just get really still and breathe and just like visualize, you know? Yeah. And it's always just like it's so much easier for me. Breathing. A, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know it's crazy, like super side note. Whenever my eye watch goes off, it's like Oh, you should breathe for like a minute right now. Yeah. And you know, the crazy thing about breathing too that I noticed, um, okay, super sidebar, right? Yeah. There's this guy from like, I think Iceland or something. He goes by the name of Wim Hof, right? Mm-hmm. And he was able to somehow master breathing. And by doing so, he's able to like walk up mountains or swim in water that's like zero degrees, like just bare naked. And, and you know, I was like, that's fucking impossible. But in his documentary, he was like, all you have to do is just learn how to control your breath. If you learn how to control your breath, you're able to control your mind. Because our brains don't, we don't don't use 100% of our brain, right? Maybe it's like 10%. Yeah. And like, even when you breathe, your oxygen, all the oxygen's only going to your lungs. But if you breathe correctly, if you hold your breath sometimes, oxygen isn't going to come out your ears. It's not going to come out your nose, not out your mouth. It'll just go straight to your head. And once it goes straight to your head, your brain starts vibrating a little bit. And that's how you can access, like, more and more pieces of your brain. Yeah, wow. weird shit. I, I, I watch a lot of weird shit, but... That's you crazy. You know what I mean? Like, it, it's that type of shit that makes sense, that even, like, breath control yeah. can help you out on a daily basis. Absolutely. Breathing, that's really fucking crazy. I'll send you the documentary afterwards, if anything. Yeah, by the way. <laughs> To work on my breathing. I love breathing. Like, I mean, obviously. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We kind of need but, it. But yeah, but I love, I love breathing and manipulating it and just like feeling what it does. Cause like as a singer, like that was always since I was little. My auntie, I didn't take like voice lessons when I was little. I just loved to sing. From mm-hmm. when I was like two or three, I was obsessed. Like in the car seat. Like nice. Fits if the music went off, <laughs> like I need these tunes, okay? You know, my mom, my mom noticed that that I was into singing from a really young age, but I really didn't like know how to sing. So my auntie came to visit. I think either I went to visit her in Atlanta, or they came up, but she started teaching me. She heard me sing, and she said, "Oh, you like to sing?" And she she's a singer, and she was like, she's not a singer like professionally, but mm-hmm. she's always sang, and um, she taught me the basics. And from there, I kind of started realize like she taught me the basics about breathing. And from mm. there, I started to just realize like the control you could have, you know, just from breathing. But it went way past music, you know, like it just kind of absorbed into life, like, and just how I operate through life. Like breathing has helped me like across the board, but I did learn it from singing though, and getting mad, like having a temper, and like I said, getting into mm. it. Like I said, the thing about a fight, like just. My the way I like responded to stuff like breathing helps, you know, it helps calm you down. No, the heat of the moment, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's why it's like you can remember to in those moments, you know. I I hear you remember to sometimes, but yeah, no, no, it's like whenever you get into a particular fight or whatever with somebody, it's Mm -hmm. like I'm the type of person which I'm like, yo, I need to step out for a sec. Like, I'm saying, fuck you, chill, let me step out and let me just control (laughs) myself so that I can actually. (laughs) <laughs> articulate what I really want to say to you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. One yeah. of those things. So, singing. Who, like, who... You said your earlier songs, you were writing, like, more about your emotions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. When when did you, like, really start to get the ball rolling? Like, oh, I can do singing more professionally. So, like, I did... Like, I went to college and stuff. I did that. I dropped out of college. I went back to college. And then I was just like... I knew, like, I always knew that I wanted to do music and that I just wanted to be creative, like, for a living. But, you know, I didn't come from that, like, type of family, you know? I didn't come from, like, the artists and the, like, I came from teachers who were like, Mm. you go to school, we sacrificed a lot for you to even have this option. You're going to do it. You know what I mean? And me, like, I had my ways that I was rebellious, but I I also had my ways that were very, like, um like respectful of my par- of my parents and like my culture like I've always just been kind of like teetering on that line of like I just want to completely rebel against everything <laughs> but then I also like respect what I come from and like love what I come from and like you know that was especially my father it was really like it was just a thing for him like 
me going to school. And so I went to school, like, you know, I just went to school, like, everybody that I was around was just kind of going to school or, like, staying in the city, but still at least going to, like, a school in the city, you know? Yeah. Um, And so I did that, and I just, like, I always made music, but I didn't make money from music. Like, I just made music in my dorm room and (laughs) tried shit, you know what I mean? And, like, linked up with other people who made, who were just trying shit, too, in college. And so that happened. And then after that, I was in Atlanta, and I decided to start doing like live shows you know just trying to perform because I was really into like my instruments and and performing I mean there would just be no one there it would just be me in the room but I was like you know I could do that probably and I remember I did this like random show and I just opened for somebody and I played a few songs on the guitar and like it went well and I was like this is really fun you know and I kind of just from there like I fell in love with performing Mm. I performed all the time in Atlanta that's how I met most of like my friends from Atlanta, like, that do music. I just kind of was always around, and I would perform, like, at every type of event, like, because my music is not really, like, a genre like that, Mm -hmm. especially then when I was just playing guitar and, like, had my little songs, like, had not little songs, but I had my little songs, you know, and I would just play guitar by myself where I would have a background singer, and, like, I would do a reggae show and then do, like, a a super, like, hip-hop show, and then I would do, like... (laughs) a random like family festival and then I would do like the singer songwriter kind of country folk like venue too you know like yeah. I just kind of Whoa. I just was around yeah I was around everyone Atlanta is really diverse like that so I learned how to perform at all sorts of different places whole in the just situations in front of like hella different crowds too very different crowds like my favorites would be the, the reggae shows because they were just so nice there was always food you know, I could always smoke a beef. Free and comp. I could just, yeah, and like, and then hip hop shows in Atlanta, it's just like, that was a whole like, you know, it's a whole culture and it's, it's super fun. It's super fun, like when you're, when you're in it, you know, like, yeah. so that was cool. But no, it was, it was one of the best cities I could imagine just from traveling around. And I feel like it's one of the best cities to just grow as an artist and get to know yourself and try shit and like, it's super supportive, so. So which one was, like, your, like, number one favorite show doing in Atlanta? In Atlanta? Mm, my number one favorite show in Atlanta. That's really hard. So <laughs> many things just flooded my brain. Let me think. You're like, well, you had this one, that yeah. one, the reggae show, the hip-hop show, the country show. <sighs> hmm. That's really hard. I did. I remember one one show I did um, with the organization that I would perform with a lot for the world world reggae shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it was literally like a a warehouse type of thing that was just set up, but the set times kept getting pushed back. Everything was running oh, mad shit. late. It was just getting so late. I was supposed to be done at nine. It was like almost midnight. Something crazy. Whoa. I had eaten like twice. Like all my friends just were high, high as shit. Just. They're like, like chilling. So, we were so all are just you still there. going or what? Right. But I was really young, so especially back then, I would just be like, no, nah, I'm trying to perform, you know? Like, I just, I want to be with the people. Like, I just, yeah. so I just was still, and also I probably didn't have much else to do. I'm like, whatever, I'll just keep <laughs> eating and smoking and chilling yeah, and yeah, like yeah. talking, you know? And it finally was was my turn to go, and it was like just the best energy ever. And there were kids like still just running around awake. You know how like kids like when it's like a church event or like a, like you just it's a different type of day, and the kids are like up at like midnight. And you're like, what are you doing? They're running yeah, around. Yeah. Like the parents are the parents were on some other shit because they had been there all day like partying. And it was just so fun and like, um, yeah, like honestly, those shows were some of my. F- that's how I learned how to perform. You know, is just like. Not just for one like type of person, just a person that just has their ears open, you know? Yeah. And yeah, like that show was really dope. Um Yeah, there there's just too many. I'm just like about to say like four <laughs> at once, but yeah, there's Yeah. 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 Now that's tight, dude. Um, because the way I see it it's really difficult to try to have everybody like really feel your music, whether it's like 
young, old, or like different types of races because you don't know how people are going to respond to it. Yeah. I can only imagine like, were, were you performing like at church when you were growing up too? Yeah, I sang at church. Mm. Um, that's like the first space I sang in, you know, like a lot of singers. I, yeah. My, my parents, like I said, I grew up in the church. Um, my, we went to an African American, like a black American church mm-hmm. um, in every city that we lived in. But at one point we were going to uh, a black church and then we were going to a Nigerian church, like after, like on the same day, like oh, two shit. churches. Damn. And you were performing at both? <laughs> I wasn't performing, I don't think at either. I don't even think I was, because that's the weird thing, you know, I... I sang in the church, but, like, I wasn't super, like, I don't have a ton of memory. I don't think I was super committed to the church choir. Uh, like, I would be in and out, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I would want to go to Sunday school instead and do the, like, I just wasn't, I wasn't in the kids' choir. Like, I don't know. I just, I always, I always had trouble, like, singing, not trouble, but I liked singing my little songs in my little way, you know what I mean? But... Uh. I wasn't the best choir kid, even in school too. I had to be in choir, like yeah. in school, like. Well, even in choir, because you know, I, I used to be a choir boy myself mm-hmm. too, and it's like when you're in a group with hella people singing the same song. Yeah. You know, you kind of have to sing it in a certain way. Some people yeah. get the lows, other people get the highs. It's like, well, what if I want to do the highs Both. today? Both. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Like that was my thing. So I. I'm so grateful for my times in choirs because it really taught me musicality and like mm-hmm. harmonies and certain things. But like it was always tough for me because I always say like I'm not necess- like I'm I'm a, just a storyteller. Like I like to sing to, for a reason, like to say what I'm singing about, you know. Mm-hmm. But some like I leave that to people who really be singing. Like if they're gonna sing together and sing the same song, that's beautiful. But like I just never, I wasn't committed. I had trouble being committed to like most things where I couldn't just be me and uh. like be creative, you know, same thing with sports. Like I, I'm, I'm an athletic person, but like, what would what, you play? I ran both Track. me. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I ran, which was kind of like a cop out. Cause it was just kind of like, you don't have to be, you are on a team, <laughs> <laughs> but it's different than like, you know, other, other types other of sports, sports yeah. you know? But I always wanted to try stuff. Like, I really, like, there was a little time, I don't know what happened, but I was really good at basketball for this window. Uh-huh. But it just kind of, you know, I never trained it, and I never, like, followed through with it. Because, like, I had trouble committing to shit until it, like, unless, if it wasn't music, if it wasn't mm. writing or dancing, I was kind of just, like... So you, you were, like, re- like, you personally were more geared towards the arts of everything. yeah. And I feel like... Mm-hmm. I liked other subjects. I liked science. That was the only th- other thing that I was, like, really into. That's kind of... Okay, so now that's very interesting because I find a lot of people, it's either... I guess it's either, like, they're more religious-based or they're more science-based. But mm-hmm. you like science, too? Yeah, but I can't say I'm religious-based. Okay. I mean, I, I, yeah, or I was you're, raised you're in my, the church, but spiritual. I... You're spiritual. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. So science, though, in my the way that I like science, and I won't say that I, I wasn't really like good at science, like in school or anything. I just I like chemistry, and I like um, I like I like physics. Like I like certain things that just explain the natural world, you know, because I'm mm. I'm curious about stuff. So I like the answers for certain things, and then certain things I don't like the answers, you know. And that's where my I guess creative, more creative side is, is mm. that. I don't really think you ever like get answers when you just you just make stuff to like make it feel better. But like, science is more the absolute truth yeah, yeah. about something, and then I like the I like there not being a truth for something too. And it's just you know what I mean. It just is what it is. Like. So then, what what's something that you really appreciated that was like the absolute truth, and then something where you just can't, you know what I mean? It's like I just don't get it, but it's okay. Um. Like, for me, absolute truth is, like, certain, like, scientific things that are going to happen if X, Y, and Z happens. You know oh, what I okay, mean? Okay. Like, a volcano or, like, uh, I mean, some of the natural disasters even that are happening now. Like, when, I, when I'm learning about those things or why things happen, like, I just kind of like the things that I can figure out that are, like, 
yeah, this is about to happen. This is going to happen. You I know guess what I'm saying? You. Like, there's an earthquake, and then what does an earthquake cause? Not yeah, and okay, like, what okay. fault line was it on, and why? You know what I mean? I mean, certain things about earthquakes you can't predict, which is kind of interesting, yeah, but sure. like, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then for me, like, something, something that I don't have the answer to, hmm. There's actually, a, there's a lot of stuff, and I feel like the things that you really, really don't have an answer to are, are really hard to write about and, like, create about, because yeah, yeah. you don't, you really don't know to, like, write about it. But I'm trying to write more about, like, the afterlife and just, like, hmm. grief and, like, because I lost my dad, and, like, at first I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm never going to, like, I'm, I'm not going to survive this, <laughs> like, because yeah, yeah. I told you I'm sensitive, so, like... I was like, oh man, this is not, I never, I didn't know how I was going to process it and like how I was ever going to like talk about it, write about whatever, because I was just always emotional. But it's crazy because time passes, you know, and like now it's something that I can't say that I've like written some amazing song about death or why things happen the way that they happen or like how to, how to cope with it. But I definitely have written things that I never would have, could have written before and I think that that's just, like, a way that maybe I can help people that do go through those sorts of losses because, like, everybody's different. And some people, like, don't – some people don't come out of it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, not, you're never the same, but, like, some people it's really, it's really, like, debilitating, you know? So I will say certain subjects that are really hard for me to just talk about, I will explore in music before I talk about it because, like, gotcha. I don't – I I write a song about stuff better than I do like trying to explain trying to things. explain it or why yeah, yeah, I feel yeah. a way about it or whatever like that doesn't that's not really my vibe yeah yeah no, I hear you yeah um what what song in particular were you like thinking of was it one of like the release songs that you have or is this one like unreleased um no I have so I have like a few unreleased songs um one in particular that I really love and hopefully one day we'll share but um no it's really I don't have a song that's released that's about death, but I will say that my song Black Truck is about, um, is partially, a, it's partially like my story and partially my dad's story. So like he was really, he, he passed a few months after I wrote that song, before the song came out. And he was really, like he lived that type of, what I'm talking about in that song is my reality, but it's his reality too of his life. Um, and, and so that was the first time, and I actually wrote it kind of knowing that. Like, it's kind of a long story, but no, go ahead. When I went to, when I went to work on that song with Ninth Ninth Wonder, um, I went back to North Carolina, and my dad was there, and that was like the last time I hung out with him, and he was really sick, and so I was around him, and then I was like in the studio, and so that that like that was what was going on when I wrote that song. So then I just naturally kind of like wrote something that reminded me of me and him, but yeah. But I, so I can't say it's about death, but it is, a, it is kind of like my first time trying to process like how to put this person in my life into words and into spirit. Because the song sounds like his attitude, because he had mm -hmm. an attitude and he was kind of like, you know, he did his thing and he's just like, he's, he was like really humble, but he also was just kind of like, yeah, but like, I'm that nigga though. But like, you know, humble usually. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you needed to know, like you knew. And that's kind of what that song is like. <laughs> that's like kind of yeah. That was that was my inspiration for the song. So yeah, um, yeah. So that was, and I don't write a lot about. It. Like I said, it's a lot, and it's not only my my father. Like I've just lost, you know, different people in my life, yeah, young yeah, people sure. and old people, older people, and like trying to just give reason to that doesn't always work because there's not always like a reason there's not a scientific I mean there is you know people people pass yeah, yeah. but like there's not a reason so find trying to find a reason that you're never really going to find is kind of like what drives my creativity you know what I mean yeah yeah and it, it, it's crazy that you mentioned that because like I feel like it could go one of two ways it could either drive your creativity or it could just drive you insane yeah might be doing both at the same time, <laughs> probably. Some creatives might be insane. Yeah. Some, sometimes, sometimes. I, th I think you're cool, though. You know what I mean? Like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. I so, mean, I'm. Yeah, you're not lying. I sometimes I wonder, you know, which one it is. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so even uh, even Black Truck, right? Super like cool ass facts about that song. Um, first thing you mentioned was Ninth Wonder. 
Mm-hmm. How'd that even come about? My manager introduced us. Nice. Um, I was a super fan. Like I said, I'm from North Carolina. He's from North Carolina. Um, I, like, when I got into Little Brother, I got into Ninth Wonder. I was really into Little Brother when I was, like, <laughs> growing up there. And um, just always, you know, he's just a legend. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So, um, yeah, we got introduced at the studio, and we just decided to try to work on stuff and see what yeah, came, yeah. you know? And then I, so then I went there, though, because, like I said, my dad was sick in North Carolina. So it was like, okay, I'm going to go there, but I'm going to, like, see him, too, you know? And, um, and that's how that exchange came to be. And then we ended up just, he's just super cool and super supportive. And, like, I have so much love for him and, like, his whole collective they've just been really dope and you know fellow nc creative oh no yeah for sure yeah forces for sure is there any like city yeah yeah rhapsody too i it was crazy because you know how on instagram you could see like who comments like at the bottom of shit like i seen rhapsody's name on like one of your photos i was like okay like that's kind of cool but then it makes sense because you know you grew up in like north carolina and all that yeah no she's she's amazing how, what's the support been? I, I still want to get back to Ninth Wonder, though. But yeah. what's the support been looking like from your fellow, I guess, North Carolina like artists? Like Ninth Wonder, Rhapsody, maybe even like J. Cole, too. Um, I, I've met him, and he's amazing. And he's, he's supportive. Yeah. Um, and he, you know, he's like a, a legend. Like, he's a, he's a new generation legend. And... Um, Watching his like watching his ascent was also really inspiring for me too because, um, you know, he produces like his own music and he has his own little world and I always wanted like I just always was stubborn about my vision and my like sound and what I was trying to do and I don't know it's just nice to like look up to him as somebody from North Carolina who from Fayetteville who was like really just doing his own thing, but, like, killing it, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And so now it's really cool, and it's, like, really dope to see, especially my friends, like, working with him, like, my friends, J.I.D. and, and Earth Gang, and, like, it's it's just dope how time passes and things yeah, evolve, because, yeah. like, he's definitely a North Carolina legend, you know? No, yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, I mean... Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, you know, dude's my so favorite you're, rapper. You, yeah, you're kind of in him. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I met him, though, like, you know, quick story, like, I actually met him, too, and I remember the first time I met him, like, I, I was freaking the fuck out, because, you know, I couldn't help but think, like, wow, like, this is the same guy who was helping me out through high school and mm-hmm. college, you know what I mean, just because all of his songs were, like, songs of hope and optimism, mm-hmm, it's like, you know, mm-hmm. you can always get it as long as, like, you believe, so it makes sense that, you know, you're within that circle, because... Even you growing up, you said like, oh, I just learned how to believe in myself. Mm -hmm. It's like the same essence that I feel like a lot of the North Carolina cats have in them. Yeah, because we don't like, you have to, (laughs) especially for anyone to know about you outside of North Carolina, Mm -hmm. like you have to believe in yourself like that, you know, and, and leave and just like come back and be, you know, like you have to not leave. And I don't mean physically, like, leave, like, go live somewhere else. It's more just, like, believe that you can branch out. You know what I mean? That was my experience living there. And, like, granted, I wasn't born and raised there, but I came of age there, you know, and I really have a lot of love for North Carolina. So you kind of feel it, like, you kind of feel it with other fellow North Carolinians when you just are around people. It's like, oh, like, you're... You've got that same speed to you. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. you're you're not in a you're not in a rush. Like you're just you're just believing in yourself and doing your thing and like making your own way. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So well, that's why I, you know I, I urge hella people to just move out of their comfort zone in that yeah. sense. Like whether it's the Bay Area or North Carolina, I I always press the people like yo like there's such a bigger world out here that you need to explore. Like it's yeah. silly when you think about. This is North Carolina, and this is all I'm ever going to, like, stay at. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. And I used to be, like, 
I used to really think that was super duper silly. Like, and then I had to realize, you know, at the same time, like a lot of people, like that's life. And that's, that's, you know what I mean? That's home is great. Like home is a great feeling. You know what I mean? And, and I love, that's why I love North Carolina. Even if like, like my dad's passed now and like my, my mom moved away and like no one, I don't, I'm not even like from there anymore. I don't really, you know, it's not, I'm from there, but that's not where like I would go if Mm. I was going home, you know, I'll go visit my family, like where they live in Seattle. So um, but there's just something that's very like home about North Carolina. Like once you're there, it's just like it's a home type it's of homey. place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's homey. Yeah. So even if, so even if you don't consider yourself being like from North Carolina, yeah. Did you did you ever struggle with like I guess self identity? Yeah, kind of. Mm. As far as, like, where I'm from? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not from anywhere. So it's, like, tricky because everyone's from... Not everyone, but most people are from somewhere. And that's a thing. And you'll be, like, super proud of where you're from. And Mm -hmm. I'm, like... I'm really, like, my home is really, like, a feeling more, like... Because, like I said, I'm close to my family, you know? I'm a family person. So, like, where my family's at or, like, where the love is... You know, where the love is in my life is, like, a home feeling for me. Is that warm feeling. But it's not a place, like... It can't be a place. They literally tore my house down in North Carolina that I that I came up in. Like what? the city like bought it from my mom and like tore it down to expand the street. Like that's that's a metaphor for my life. Like <laughs> shit just shit. starts over. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, oh, okay, I don't have a house. Okay. So I don't have a house there. But I have home there. I have yeah. the feeling of home there for sure. Yeah. Dude, that's insane. Yeah. I can't imagine what that was like growing up, just seeing like your, you know, the the house you grew up in just getting tore down. It was crazy. Like honestly, I didn't see it get tore down, but like I just was in town visiting my dad, and like I just drove past. I just drove past it, and it was gone. And <laughs> I was like, damn. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, we knew it was gonna happen, but it was just crazy. But like, like I said, at that point, like by that point, I was just kind of like. Yeah. I'm not attached to, to material stuff. Yeah, you know, you know what? what I mean? Because I feel like in situations like that where you see a lot of change happen, like it kind of forces you to grow too. Yeah. It was a transitional time. You know what I mean? Like things come to an end type shit. Like yeah. your house is gone. Okay, cool. Like I'm still alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Mariba, how did uh how did Black Truck get on the insecure? Soundtrack. They just, I don't know. You know I mean, I got thrown I mean, facts. Was, yeah, email, yeah, it like, was on the Insecure soundtrack. Um, I really wish that I could get this story right, but I can't say I 100% can as far as names of people. But yeah, it yeah. just, yeah, it, it, they, they reached out. We reached out. Something happened. There was some sort of reach out. Some email hit and somebody. Yeah. yeah. And um, by that point, like Black Black Truck had been out for a little while, so it was just out there doing its thing, you mm-hmm. know. What kind of uh, what kind of feeling did you get knowing that it would be on Insecure though? It was amazing because I love Insecure and like <laughs> it's like I don't even like I still feel like because I got um, my roommate has the HBO Go uh, yeah. login. I never had HBO. That was big (laughs) for me. I was like, okay, I'm about to watch one show. Like, what show is it going to be? Because I don't really watch TV. And I just, like, got addicted to Insecure. And I'm like, this is my life. Like, living in LA, being a young black woman, I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. It was just too relatable. And then, yeah, I didn't know that they were going to use it when they use it. And that was so fire for me. Like, it was, Uh, I didn't know that they were going to use it as, like, the intro of the show for that episode. And so, when it happened, I was just like, oh, shit. Like. That's tight. That's tight. That's tight. <laughs> yeah. It was funny, like Jasmine, uh, she's always been telling me, like, yo, you need to watch Insecure, watch Insecure. Yeah. I'm like, bro, like, then give me an HBO login. Like, I will we happily need it. watch it. Like, yeah, 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 for sure. Mm-hmm. That's crazy because it's like. Some it's, of my it, friends were like, sorry, I didn't catch it. Like, I don't have <sighs> HBO. What, um, what episode is it? Six. Of season three. Three? Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Mark that. I'm gonna watch that one maybe first. If it doesn't like fuck up the timeline, don't watch it first. Don't actually don't definitely do don't watch okay, that okay, one okay. first because it'll be fucked up. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't even want to ask you like what the vibe is for that episode because 
I'm gonna just like I need to milk this shit. Yeah. Um, no, don't. Just don't even ask for any more questions, honestly. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, a question I do want to ask well, no, that's kind not, of like, like <laughs> not in general, but about insecure. <laughs> well, okay. So here's a question I do have for you, though, and I have this conversation with, um, you know, my radio personality a lot. Um, he goes by DJ Head, young black male. Okay. And right now. As an Asian American, I see a lot of other Asian Americans like really making a push into the entertainment and music world, right? But across the board, like from the beginning, from as far as I can remember, I felt like the most difficult situation to be in as a human being is like a female black woman. Mm. You know what I mean? Because for one, it's like you're black, and for two, it's like you're a woman. Like both black people and women haven't been treated well as far as history can tell. Mm-hmm. I don't know, like, have you felt like it's been a lot difficult for you to, like, be yourself in regards to, like, this entertainment industry? Hmm. Uh, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, whew, there's Sorry, just loaded so much. question. Yeah, there's just a <laughs> lot. I'm like, ooh, okay. Um... Yeah, I agree, first of all. I think when when you think about being, like, from an oppressed group, it's kind of like... I just have uh, stereotypes on top of stereotypes to deal with, you know? And um, some of the stereotypes are, like, are true about me. <laughs> and some of them are really, like they're really similar to being in sort of like a cage in one way or another, you know, for, for me, as my experience as like a black woman in the entertainment industry so far is that like most of the things that people expect about a black woman are seated in like racism in general, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I've got racism deciding what I'm supposed to be. And I'm out here trying like in so many ways to break free from generational curses, like systemic curses, you know, all sorts of things. Like I have some family that's one foot in, one foot out of Mm -hmm. like what what we come from and what we come from in an ancient sacred way and what we come come from in an oppressed way, you know? And um, it's just like you can be trying as hard as you're trying to be everything that they might say that you, like to be every, to not be anything that they say that you are. But at the end of the day, if that's what people expect from like a black woman, it's kind of hard to um, garner attention if you're not in some way playing into that, you know? And that's kind of been my journey in general is that like I, like I said from when I was little, like if I can't be myself, if I can't live in my truth of what I'm really feeling, I just feel like it's kind of a waste for me to even express myself because it's like I'm only here to be truthful. I could make a million songs about some shit everybody, like, like I don't know. I could just make songs that aren't that personal or aren't really, like, expressing my insights based on what I've been through. But I do feel like like artists have a responsibility if this is what comes through them as a vessel. Like, if they can speak candidly about what they've lived and they can help people, I feel like that's a responsi- responsibility that I've taken on. You know what I mean? So because of that, I can't, like... I can't imagine, I just, I can't imagine surrendering to what a black woman is quote unquote supposed to be in the industry, you know? So what, what is a black woman supposed to be? Um, you know, I just think that we're supposed to be pleasing to the male gaze and also not be difficult, basically. And that's like, difficult means like a lot of different stuff, I guess, but like, Kind of like may our messages just not be too hard to digest for for what a white straight male would want to hear. You know what I mean? Mm. That's because that's who like is still running a lot of a things. A lot of the shit. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, okay, if what I'm saying is a hard pill to swallow for so and so, are you ever gonna even hear it? You know what I mean? Because like, there's ways to there's ways to obstruct those sorts of things, you know? And black women have been experiencing that for generations at this point, just like outspoken black women who have things to say that might spark someone to be like, hmm, she's kind of right, or might just inspire somebody to be something different, 
You know what I mean? Just, you know what? Like, that's cool what all y'all are doing, but like, I'm going to start doing this. You know, this person inspires me to kind of like do this other thing. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes people just need inspiration. Sometimes people just need, um, in the midst of all the darkness that's like, fucking going around in this world right now and has been but like mm-hmm. you know it's some weird times we're living in right now and I think sometimes people just need like some hope and inspiration and I feel that like if you're a black woman that's trying to give that in the actual art it can be just difficult to get your and it happens some some women break through you know and they're inspirational and they speak their truths and sometimes it's it's a hard pill to swallow but they but it's just few and far between you know yeah um and I support, like, the thing is, like, I support, like, I don't know, like, I just love women and what where we're at, like, right now and what we're pushing for right now. And it, there's so many facets to it, you know what I mean? So at the same time, it's like, I do respect women who are just taking agency and saying, like, if I want to be myself and it also coincides with what the man wants then so be it but I'm gonna be myself you know what I mean (laughs) so if I feel like being like sexual and I feel like being like I I feel like being something that might be considered like pleasing the male gaze if they're doing it for themselves like I'm all here for that too Mm. you know because that's another thing about this time is like people are finding their freedom and it's and freedom has a different a different face to it for every person you know so it's tricky because you like it's like it just there's two things happening at once. People are becoming more liberated and people are also kind of becoming more like bound to what to expectations. Mm. You know what I mean? So I just think we just keep on trying to like yeah. just be ourselves. And I that's for me, like every day I wake up, like that's all I'm trying to do is preserve like my Yourself. Me, my meanness and like I think that could help people more than me just becoming anything that's just like me just becoming an amalgamation of like what I think I should be at this point you know what I mean just being me I don't even remember the question but that that's the answer I respect that a lot and you know like just coming from coming from like a male's perspective it's refreshing to because I, I grew up with a lot of women in my family. So like I like to think that I, I guess, have a lot more respect for women and like what they go through and all that. So when I hear that, it's like really great to see women be like liberated and free. I never really understood like as a young child, like, oh, why is she a stripper? Or why is she acting like this or like that? Like it never really made sense to me. Like, how is that liberation? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But then as conversations like move forward even like like the stripper industry or even like the porn industry if you really think about it who's paying to see all these you know all these mm-hmm. women it's like it's men mm-hmm. and like if a woman feels liberated and thinks like well i'm getting this guy to pay for me like you know what i mean it's it's kind of like a liberation in its own sense and it's like i feel like as long as women are comfortable in their own bodies it's going to take some time for men to realize, like, that's just her being comfortable as opposed to looking at her like, oh, she's a hoe or, right. you know, like, you know, shit like that. It takes time and it takes men, you know, the same way that they used to, that this used to be, the, well, it's still the case. It's definitely no use to, but that you might have to tell somebody who's white, like, if, if you're in a room with other white people and they say something derogatory about a different race or, you know, whatever, you have to be the one that's going to be like, you really shouldn't say that. And mm-hmm. here's why, you know, it's going to take those, it's going to take time for men because it's going to take so much of that. And yeah. like, I grew up with an older brother and would be around his friends. I grew up a bro in a sense, like mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, you know, and, and because I was like comfortable in those settings because of that, I've just like been around groups of men and like not been, you know, with any of them in that, in, in like a romantic way, just been around yeah. niggas really just chilling. And it's like, I'm always that person. Like, I'm always, obviously, that person. I'm yeah. very outspoken about, like, my beliefs. And, like, I just, I believe what I believe. And I don't believe in oppression. And I just, like, make it known. But at the same time, I feel like men, again, they're, they're in that place of, of privilege that's kind of like, I can make these jokes. And I can go over well in a whole room of men. No one's going to say, like, you shouldn't say that about mm-hmm. her. 
or like she's a human being or whatever. You know what I mean? So I've just kind of seen like things are changing. You know what I mean? But it's just going to take a lot of time and a lot of people like stepping out and being like, I don't believe in this thing that y'all all are just like letting pass because mm. it's been pa- it's been let pass for so long. So now we're just like in this and we just do this and we just say these things when really that's shaping the truth. You know, what you say has power. And like, I, be- I believe that's why we're kind of where we're at with like women not feeling respected by men is just like. If you if that's how you talk about women, then then actions follow. You know what I mean? And mm. it's I think that's that's like it's so important for men to start just kind of being like, I I don't really fuck with that. It's really easy. And the thing is, like, a lot of people just, who you're around, it does, like, shape who you are. You know Mm. what I mean? That's why, like, parents will be like, watch who you're around, like, whatever, because it does. Like, your people, like, can can help you evolve or help you not evolve. (laughs) You know what I mean? So I think it's an interesting time for men, I would assume. I mean, I... Like, I have less and less men in my life by the day because it's just like, <laughs> y'all get on my fucking nerves. <laughs> like, I mean, I love the ones yeah. I love, but it's like, y'all got to change. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not dealing with this shit. I'm not your mom. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not te- you know yeah. what I mean? Um, but at the same time, it's like, that's just what it's going to take for evolution to actually happen. You know what I mean? And I'm not explaining shit, overly explaining shit to white people. I'm not overly explaining shit to men. Like, that's not how, what my life is made for. You know what I mean? But I do think we can all like help people evolve. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And not shame people who are trying to evolve. So So then how do you like how do you cope with it on a daily basis then? Do you I mean, as you said, like you cut out a lot of men from your life. Like do you <laughs> I mean not not to put it in that way, end but quote. you know end quote. <laughs> yeah. But um like you know what I mean? Like do you just surround yourself by more like w- uh, womenly figures in your life or men who aren't afraid of like or like who aren't intimidated by Feminine energy, yes, I'll be around the yes, like mm. and men who respect feminine energy, cause like they there's plenty of men who you know what I mean. I, it's just a hyper masculine thing, like and I get it. Like my father's, my father was a very masculine, you know, yeah. man, old fashioned, more old fashioned than he had his progressive things, but you know, I, I I was raised with that type of presence as a man, so I get it, and um, yeah, but. I just, it's just boring. Like, it's just boring being around men who are just so sensitive and touchy about everything. And just, like, everything is, like, I'm not trying to be soft or whatever. And I'm just, oh like, be God. soft. Be yeah. hard. Be be complex. Be a yeah. whole person. Like, why are you trying to be part of a person? You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, I, you know, and I keep people in my life. That's the thing. Like, I love people. When I love people, like... I got you, like, hit me up. Like, I'm not the best with communication. But I always come come around in my own time, and, like, I have so much love for people. But it's more just, like, you have to protect your energy, too, and just, you know, be yeah, yeah. to be the best person you can be. You can't, like, fight the same battle every day. You know what mm. I mean? Within your mm. life. Like, so, so, yeah, it's a mix, you know, of, like... And then I have a lot to learn, too. You know, I'm not the person who's like, oh, like, can you come into my room and let me teach you or are you not qualified <laughs> to be taught by me like that sounds crazy but like I have shit to learn too but it's like yeah. I gotta be able to learn from you and if you're blocked like that I'm probably not learning from you a yeah, ton yeah, yeah. like you're really blocked my dude so I yeah. hear you surround yeah. yourself by just good people and lo- very like minded people right well it's cool to have friends that don't think just like you but I mean Find your peace, man. Yeah, yeah. Just find your peace. Wherever other some people like conflict, I get it. Like, <laughs> I feel you. So, you know? um, let, let's go on like a lighter subject. Okay, now. yeah. <laughs> Chick is deep. Yeah, no, right, time. no. But I, I really appreciate you like mm-hmm. opening up and everything like that. That's, mm-hmm. that's the point of the lunch table. Cool. Um, yo, so listening to your tracks, you know how influential I knew you were. You made fucking JID sing for an entire song. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, damn, this, this guy's usually just like rapping hella fast and shit. Like, no, I, I didn't make him. <laughs> how did, um, so you, you even mentioned, you know, being in ATL and Earth Gang and JID being, you know, also from ATL. Like, how did that, those relationships form? Um, we did it, me and um, Earth Gang did a show together when we were both still in college, all three of us. Yeah. yeah. They were still in college. I was still in college separately. Um, just on campus, on my campus. And 
we just met from there and then they had reached out about like me being on one of their songs and then I was on that song called UFOs and then um, I met I met Jid soon after through them when they came back to Atlanta from school. Oh, nice. Okay, and mm-hmm. then you guys kind of just like meshed well together in terms yeah. of the music? Yeah, yeah, like we just were both, you know, we were, we were all in the same... Um, in the same circle, like musically in Atlanta. And there was just an energy and a renaissance there at the time where people were just working together a lot. And I feel like we all just like met, like I just, we just meshed musically and yeah, like yeah. got along as people. So, yeah. Yeah. That's tight. Mm-hmm. And even going back to the conversation, like our Earth Gang and like Jid, like are they kind of like on your same like conscious level in terms of like, I don't know, like society, music, and all that stuff? Cause, I mean, we're all different, and that's why I was saying, you know, we're just, we're different, like, um, and, and, but yeah, I mean, I think there's obviously, like, commonalities, which is why we gravitate towards each other, and that's why, like, I love, I love all of them, too, because they're just more, like, as far as being a woman and being friends with them, you know what I mean? Like, they're, they had, they, they know the value, I think, Um, and they talk, they talk about it. I mean... We all got our complexities. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I do too, you know? So, um, but yeah, I I definitely gravitated towards them as people as well as like the music because they're just, they're just cool and we can talk about some off the wall shit, but then also just like vibe and, yeah. And it doesn't have to always be like super deep too. You know what I mean? Do you have any like cool stories between like you and them three? Um,. Um, I was drunk one night. Nah, none of that <laughs> shit. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have we, <laughs> drunk <yeah>. nights. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, yeah. Atlanta nights were fun, you know. There was a house they stayed in that had. Um, no, they didn't stay there, but we used to convene at this house, the crew house, and it was just like there was a trampoline in the back, and all of us, and black too. We oh, would sick. all be, you know. Yeah, we would all. <laughs> I'll be partying or whatever and just like it was cool because like we would link up as friends and then like music would just like kind of sprout naturally Mm. you know what I mean because it's like so much of just like it can be kind of unnatural the feeling of like hey let's work together whatever and that shit mm -mm, it's not it doesn't work it can work but it's like it always just is better when when you're friends in my opinion at least from my experiences so far so we would just like link up and then organically make music and yeah, like there's some memories, some some drunken nights, some <laughs> you know, some experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and then they come out here. So since I've been living out here, like I see them pretty often. I was just with with Olu with um Johnny Venus yeah, Earth yeah. Gang the other day and it's just like it's a it's a for me being out here, I don't have family out here, like I have friends out here that I made when I like as I've been out here, but mm-hmm. you know it's it's just so beautiful to like have my friends still from Atlanta that yeah, come out here. Sure. And I, when I spend time with them, I'm like, okay, I remember, like, you know. I remember how cracking all those nights were and shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, and it's a different culture, you know, like just the southern speed and jokes and how like like they be cracking on me like heavy. Like, are you like the little sister to them? Thing is, I'm not like I, like we're just all kind of Lil sister slash gotcha, butler, gotcha. you know. Like, there's no big or Lil, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, like I said, like I am the the woman in the situations, and I'm not like I'll argue with some niggas about some shit. I'll make stuff deep that's not deep, like yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> like, and and that's like not just around them. That's like around all my my male friends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, We've had some debates, some some blowout arguments, but then sometimes it's really interesting and fun because it's just like you just are, come from different perspectives, you know. But yeah, like niggas really be trying to clown me, but I, because I, because I also just like be laughing in a weird way. Like I like to get clowned, like not super hard, but it's yeah. like funny to me. Like I have a dark sense of humor, so I, I just be like, you know. And then when I jump in and and when I do my ever so rare, when I contribute. It's not, you don't want to get me started. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a Virgo. Like, I observe a lot, yeah. you know? So, so it's fun just being with people who will just come at you because 
sometimes, you know, people are like mad serious and they're just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you know, or they like work, work with you on music and they like think, you know, they, nah, I'm super, like, I'm I'm a clown, like when it gets to that point, like, and I'm down to be clown. Yeah. And just, yeah. Well, because it's like the second you bite back, everyone's like, oh shit. Yeah, because people always tell me that they don't know when I'm joking or when I'm serious. Yeah. People tell me that all the time and people tend to lean towards me being serious. People always think I'm serious and that's a big mistake. That's the easy way to be stressed out is to like think that I'm always not serious. joking when I'm joking because I'll say some really fucked up stuff. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, if you thought that was serious, then you're hurt, your feelings are hurt now. Yeah, yeah. But I was totally joking. Yeah. But it's not like... <laughs> <laughs> But it's not, like, I'm not, you know, I don't really crack on people because people be sensitive. And I know, like, I don't really like to, but it's more just, like, people be thinking I'm mad when I'm really not mad. Like, it takes a lot to get me, like, mad. I mean, do you, you remember know? something so that you... tread lightly, you know? Do you remember something that you've said to either of them when they were just, like, you know, like, hurt off of that shit? Like, low-key hurt? Who? Like, Jid or, like, Earth Gang or, like, nah. Nah. They're cool. It take it would take a lot, I think, to hurt them. <laughs> that's not yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. not really. But like I said, I just have an older brother, so it's yeah, just yeah. if you're a dude in my life, you got to be able to like you gotta spar, take yeah, 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 cause sure. yeah. So <laughs> so enough about all like you know the older music that you have. Let's yeah. talk about like the new music that mm-hmm. you got going on. Um, you know, on iTunes you only got like four songs out right now. Yeah. But like when can we expect like new music from you? So there actually is way more stuff if you type in my full name, Mary Mariba. Mm-hmm. Um I have a, a full I have a full project out called Room for Living and I released that four years back. Okay. So a long time ago. It was just guitar music. Um but in a weird way I still really I thought I would I would hate it by now, but I still I still like it, so check it out, you know, if you feel inclined to. But, um, but yes, like, as my new kind of era and, like, and, and my new music, like, I have a few songs out. I have Black Truck, Planet You, and I don't know what the other two you saw even are. Probably the features that I'm yeah, on. Yeah, it was, like, the Jid and the Earth Gang feature. Yeah. Um, so I'm working on, well, I'm pretty much finished my project, my next project, um, and it's going to be 10 songs. And okay. Yeah. It's, it's like a, it's like a mix of, of the things that I, like, I really love poetry, so I'm just kind of like blending together some worlds. Nice, nice. That I've been occupying for a little bit into one project. So I'm excited. I've been working on it for a while. How long? Um... Well, I will say like bits and pieces because I, I write my songs in fragments a lot. Like I'll write, sometimes I'll just write a full song like through, but sometimes, you know, it's just like an idea or like I come back to it and I'm like, hey, that was really like whatever. So the oldest song from the project is four years old and it's, oh wow yeah, and it's when I was coming to LA. Wow, that's crazy. Like for the first, like taking a trip, it wasn't yeah yeah. There. And so that was, like, I started it four years ago, but I didn't finish it, like, until... Like, recently? recently. Yeah, That's all of nuts. them. Yeah. But not all of them. Some of them I wrote, like, really recently, yeah, you yeah. know? Um, but um, it's... For me, like, what I'm trying to tell is once I figured out kind of what all of the songs, the story that all of the songs were telling me when they were put together, like, I was able to kind of go back and, like, grab a few from the past like you mm, could, you could okay, help okay. me tell this but most of them I wrote like nine months to a year ago oh crazy yeah so what kind of story are you trying um, well can you give us the name of the project yeah so it's oh. called the project is called the jungle is the only way out the jungle is the only way out yeah okay so then what is the I guess what, what's the uh, storyline you're going for um so essentially it's it's, I can't say, like, it's the story of a, uh, because it's not that linear, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But just conceptually, it's um, it's kind of like an ode to taking the other road. And a lot of the stuff we talked about, like, today is kind of about how, like, what I come from with my parents being mm. the ones who left and moving around and, like, and just kind of always being down to stretch a little bit more, like, to get to something. 
And I just, I had this kind of epiphany, like, when things were really, 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 really rocky in my life, like, when my dad was really sick and, and I had no money, like, I was just, like, I was, I was doing some, you know, it was just, a, it was just a different time. And, um, and I kind of realized, like, this is, this is always the beginning of something great, you know, like, kind of throughout history, like, the beginning of something great usually like it has to kind of crash and burn to become nothing to like mm. you know become something again and i realized that i was going through this very tumultuous very like hot and dangerous jungle in my life and huh. like i just I, I could kind of see my life in a bird's eye and a lot of people i was living in downtown la at the time and and it's really populated there and there's a lot yeah, of people yeah. and like you know there's people on the street like living on the street that they were basically my neighbors, and I was living there day in and day out, going to work. I worked two jobs at the time, and I just was like, and, you know, politics were changing. A lot of stuff was changing for the worse. Like, a lot of stuff was getting dark, and it was like a dark cloud was kind of coming over, and I kind of felt like, you know, we are, we are entering a jungle. Like, we're in a jungle mm. right now. Like, it was very often that I would be down, downtown, and I would be in the apartment that I lived in, and... I would just hear people like screaming on the street or like, you know, possessed by something and and like something was moving through them, but they would be, the things that they would be saying, people would call them crazy, but the things they would be saying would be really on point about like where the world kind of is or about um, just the spirit of things and like the darkness that they would, they would be saying some crazy shit, like you know, some crazy shit. Just like God doesn't live here anymore, those sorts of things. Oh, okay, I remember that okay, was something, yeah. you know, but just like, they would be saying um, spurts of just like wisdom that was really dark, you know, or really like, I, I'm trying to think of, of specific examples, but um, that was kind of like the soundtrack to my life when I lived, in, when I moved here was just like anguish, yeah. <laughs> but also like beautiful you know downtown is fun and there's a lot of people and it's bustling and it was I had never lived somewhere so populated like so you know I came from the country in North Carolina to like Atlanta which is a city but like I was really in the thick of something new you know but the soundtrack of my time down there was just like a lot of different people's lives happening all at once and like that's where the project was born you know because mm. I'm like okay I'm going through this jungle like I'm waking up every day like, what am I doing with my life? Like, oh shit, like following your dreams is really hard, you know? Like, I know I don't want to do it that way or that way. That way. I just want to do it my own, you know? Like just all the thoughts that I was having about my particular isolated event. But I was constantly reminded of the fact that we're all like going through something. Mm. We always, we always all feel like we're going through yeah. a very unique but difficult like a lot of times difficult like circumstance to get to the next step of something whether you're like in college or you're working or you have a family like there's all different ways that you can feel like you're in the thick of something you know yeah so me going through my shit opened my eyes to like this city that I was living in and all of these people because I had no family no friends no distractions it was just like I just started observing again, same as when I was young and went to North Carolina. I just started observing, and the stories that came were from that jungle. You, you, know? Know, you know what song you should listen to? Because this is, this is what was going through my head the entire time. It's mm. a song called Right Now by Fort Minor. Okay. So the same people that did, uh, this is 10% luck, 20% skill. I don't know if you ever heard that song. But mm. anyways, like, it's pretty much from the perspective of this guy looking out his window mm. and he's seeing all like three different people like one's like a drug addict one's one's like a family that's broke mm -hmm. and one is like a like stressful businessman or whatever and throughout that song he's really just trying to relate like yo all of these three people have like different fucking lives way different circumstances but they're all feeling mm. fucking pain yeah you know what i mean and it's like i feel like just having that conversation with you about your project, it really totally reminds me of that song because you having a bird's, I guess like having a bird's eye view of like all these people, it kind of, you take from their stories and it kind of like is a mm -hmm. self-reflection of yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Exactly. It reflects back to you, you know? Because I just saw a quote recently that was saying something like, like it's easy to love 
when you see yourself and everybody else. You know what I mean? Hmm. Because it's easy to love strangers because it's like there's something there's something that you've been through and I've also been through and you know there's something that could connect us to each other. You know, so that was kind of yeah that is kind of the idea behind the project is like. You're gonna have to go through something, but you'll get to something new that like we've all been through anyway. Like you'll mm-hmm. survive it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so once I th- I kind of thought of that, like I, when I had that epiphany, like damn, I was just like damn, it's like blow after blow in life, you know? Like, but it's also just growing up. A lot of things that were happening was just me like going through, going just being in your twenties, you just being through. yeah, going through what you what you gotta go through to learn about life, and you know just. And learn that life doesn't necessarily go as you plan, and especially if you're gonna try, like, if you're gonna try something different than what you come from or what like the ton- the path you're kind of like walking down more naturally. Anytime you're gonna have some friction, and you're gonna need to learn like this is not about to be easy. So don't think it's just like cute. You know what I mean? Like, learn some skills to get through the jungle, because if not, you know, yeah. you're gonna get eaten. Something's gonna happen. You know? Yeah. It happens. Well, Mariba, thank you for this amazing podcast. Yeah, for sure. Thank um, you for having me. No, nah, so when can we expect the project? Um, early, early next year. Very early next year. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. I'm going to cop that. Hopefully you put it on vinyl because I want that shit. Yes. Okay. That's so. like, total, <laughs> that's on the top of my list. Like that has to happen because I'm dreaming of like that sound like, for the project. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Mariba, let everybody know where else they could find you, too. Okay. Um, Mariba, M-E-R-E-B-A, on the internet. Easy. Yeah. <laughs> Easy. With the blue check mark, too. You feel me? This is The Lunch Table, Food for Thought. I'm Nico Blitz. Mariba, thank you once again. Really appreciate thank you. Thank you.